Are you struggling with your Kubernetes deployments? Hi, my name is Devan Ahmed and I'm a developer advocate at Harness. In this video, we'll deploy an application to Kubernetes using the most advanced continuous delivery platform. Let's get started. You have an application and your goal is to deploy that application to a Kubernetes cluster. Let's do that using Harness Continuous Delivery. Your application configuration might be on a Git repository, a GitHub, and the container image might be on an image registry. Here we are using Docker Hub as an example. On Harness platform, there is a service called Harness Manager, and then there is another service called Harness Delegate that sits on your local network or target infrastructure. Let's see how the delegate works. Harness delegate connects to Harness manager using WebSocket over TLS. Harness delegate does the deployment and integration on your behalf. For example, it can create and manage the Kubernetes resources for you. It also integrates with third-party resources like your artifact repositories, other cloud providers, or runtimes. If you'd like to understand more about Delegate or other Harness key concepts, you can check out the links in the video description. Let's follow this tutorial, which is on Harness Developer Hub. I'll be adding a link for this tutorial in the video description. Before you begin, you'll need a few prerequisites. You'll need a GitHub personal access token, so Harness platform can talk to your GitHub repository on your behalf you need a Kubernetes cluster, something like K3D will do. You need to install Helm CLI so that you can install Harness Delegate. And you need to fork the Harness CD example apps repository. This has the sample application guestbook, which will deploy to a Kubernetes cluster. Once that is done, there is a handy script within this tutorial that will check if your Kubernetes cluster has enough resources to install the Delegate. I have a Kubernetes cluster. It's a K3D Cult cluster. So let's see if my cluster has enough resources. First, I'll make sure that I'm connected to a Kubernetes cluster, and then I'll run the script. The script shows that my Kubernetes cluster has the required memory and CPU. Fantastic. Let's go to the next step. Now let's install Harness Delegate on our Kubernetes cluster. Once you sign in to Harness Platform, Click on Deployments from Project Setup, click on Delegates, and click Install a Delegate. You'll install on a Kubernetes cluster using Helm chart, so you can leave the default options as is. You can also leave the default name as Helm-Delegate. Now the first two commands here adds the Harness Helm chart repo to your local Helm registry. So let's do that. The next command actually installs the delegate. You can see that your account ID and the harness manager endpoint is already populated, including the delegate token. This is because you're already signed in. So these values are pre-populated for you. Once you've executed these commands, you can click on verify and it'll take a minute or two to verify the installation. Great, the delegate is installed on your Kubernetes cluster. If you'd like to see if the pod is indeed created or not, you can do a kubectl get pods for the harness delegate ng namespace. And we can see that the pod is up and running as well. Harness offers built-in secret manager for encrypted storage of sensitive information. To create a secret, click on Secrets, New Secret, select text, and give this secret a name. I have already copied my personal access token for GitHub. I'll paste it and hit Save. 
Connectors in Harness offers integration to third-party tools for authentication and operations during pipeline runtime. Let's create two connectors, starting with the GitHub connector. From the left-hand project setup navigation, click on Connectors and hit New Connector. Let's choose GitHub from the Code Repository section and let's give this a name. We have a template within this tutorial for GitHub connector. I'll copy the name from here. You can give it any name. Hit continue. Let's choose the URL type to be the repository type over HTTP. And I'll paste in my repository URL. And hit continue. For the authentication, I'll provide my GitHub username. And for the personal access token, let's use the personal access token secret we just created. Hit apply selected and click continue. Let's select connect through harness platform. Hit save and continue. And the connection test should be successful. Hit finish. Now let's create the Kubernetes connector. Click New Connector. This time let's choose Kubernetes Cluster. Let's give it a name. Let's check the template from this tutorial. Copy the name. Select Continue. Rather than specifying the master URL and credentials, let's use the credentials from the Harness Delegate. Select that option and click Continue. We can select the Helm Dash Delegate from the drop down, select it, and click Save and Continue. And the connection test should show a verification successful. Hit Finish. Fantastic! We now have added two connectors one for GitHub and one for our Kubernetes cluster. In Harness, environments define the deployment location which could be pre-production or production. From the left-hand navigation, click on Environments and plus New Environment. Let's give this environment a name. I'll call this Harness Dev Env. Let's choose pre-production and hit Save. Each environment has infrastructure definitions. It could be a Kubernetes cluster, a virtual machine, or other target infrastructure. Click on Infrastructure Definitions tab within your environment. Click Plus Infrastructure Definition. Let's give this a name. I'll call it Harness underscore KDS Infra. For the deployment type, choose Kubernetes. For the infrastructure type, Direct Connection Kubernetes. And for the cluster details, we can leverage the Kubernetes connector we already created. From the drop-down, choose harness underscore k as connector. Apply selected. Now we know that we want to deploy our application to dev-ns namespace. We expect this to come from a pipeline variable during pipeline execution. But for now, let's hard code this value, dev-ns. Later on, we'll make this change. Everything else looks same, click save. Now you have the infrastructure definition created as well as the environment created. The next step is to create a harness service. Now service in harness is what you deploy to these environments. From the left hand navigation, click on services, click plus new service, and let's add this service by giving this a name, hit save. Now I'll use the template that I have within this tutorial Let's choose the service definition, Kubernetes as the deployment type, and let's add the manifests. Click on plus add manifest, and for this tutorial, we're using a Kubernetes manifest. So let's select that, hit continue. Where are these manifests stored? For our case, these manifests are stored within a GitHub repository. So let's select that option, select GitHub, to choose the GitHub connector, we can select the drop-down 
and find the GitHub connector we already created. Select that and click Apply Selected. Hit Continue. For the manifest identifier, let's see what we have in the template. We'll use Guestbook and choose Master as the branch name. For the file or folder path, let's copy the paths from within the template. This shows the location where our manifest files are located. We have two manifest files, one for the guestbook UI deployment, one for the guestbook UI service. Hit add file and paste in the second path. Let's click submit. From the top right, click save. And now you have the guestbook service created with the configuration. It's the exciting time to create your first Harness Continuous Delivery Pipeline. Select Pipelines and click Create a Pipeline. There is a template within this tutorial for different pipeline deployment types. I'll be selecting rolling-pipeline.yaml as the template. I'll copy the name Guestbook Rolling Pipeline and select Inline for the pipeline setup. This means that the pipeline is stored within Harness. Let's click Start. Our pipeline will have a single stage. Let's click Plus, Add Stage, and choose Deploy as the stage type. From this template, I'll copy the stage name, Deploy-Guestbook, and the deployment type will be a Kubernetes deployment. Let's click Setup Stage. In the setup stage part, we have to select which service environment and infrastructure definition our pipeline will be using. From the dropdown, we can find Harness Guestbook for the service. Select Continue. We can select Harness Dev Env as the environment. Apply Selected. And finally, we can select Harness underscore K8 as infra to specify the infrastructure. Let's click Continue different deployment execution strategies are out of scope for this tutorial. Let's click rolling and use this strategy. Click save. Before we actually run this pipeline, I want to make sure that there are no resources in the dev-ns namespace. Let's click the green run button. Right now, there are no runtime inputs. Click run pipeline. Once the pipeline has started, you can see the pipeline execution logs on the bottom right corner of your screen. If we zoom in, we can see that the pipeline has started fetching the files from the GitHub repository. It has fetched the following files and it has started the Kubernetes rolling deployment. Now that the rollout deployment part is successful, let's see if the pods have been created or not. We can see that three pods for our guestbook UI are up and running. This matches to the replica account we have defined within our Kubernetes manifest. Because we have this running on our local machine, I'll be using port forward so that we can access the application. I'll be specifying the namespace as well, which is dev-ns namespace. And now let's try to access this application. This shows our deployment has been successful. Guestbook application is up and running. Our application is deployed to the Kubernetes cluster on dev-ns namespace. But let's make a modification so that this namespace value comes during pipeline execution as a pipeline variable. Click on edit pipeline, click variables from the right hand side and click plus add variable. Keep the type as string and let's give this variable a name. I'll call it k8s underscore namespace. For the value of the variable, we want this value to come during pipeline execution. So let's select runtime input. 
set the variable as required during runtime and hit save. There's a copy to clipboard button which we can use and reference this variable anywhere within the pipeline. Click apply changes and save. There's one more place where you need to make a change. Go to environments, select the harness dev env. From the infrastructure definitions, select harness underscore k as infra. And you'll see that under cluster details, our namespace is still hard coded. Let's replace that with the variable we have. Click save. Now let's go back to the pipeline and execute our pipeline one more time. Click run, and you'll see that this time, the k is underscore namespace pipeline variable is required. Provide the same value for the namespace dev-ns and click run pipeline. We can observe the pipeline execution logs and you'll see that the pipeline has been executed successfully. The only difference is this time, the pipeline is using the Kubernetes namespace as a pipeline input variable. In this video, we have deployed an application to a Kubernetes cluster using Harness Continuous Delivery Pipeline. We have installed a delegate. We have created a Harness secret, Harness connectors, services, and other entities. We have also configured a pipeline input so that your Kubernetes namespace is provided during pipeline execution. If you enjoyed this video, Consider liking this video and subscribing to Harness YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video.